Are the Roklaw Panthers one of the best teams in the ELF? I don't really know. They could be. At the beginning of the season, Matt and I counted them out, counted them as one of the worst teams in the league. But after yesterday's yesterday's showing against the Hamburg Sea Devils, I would beg to differ. Uh, yeah, they had – that, that, that is my reach number one, that that the Roklaw Panthers are one of the best teams in the ELF and that they'll finish they'll finish in the top seven. Top seven out of 12. So you reckon they're just hovering from like worst case scenario, they're an average team. That's they're like above average. They, they're above average now, but worst case scenario, the top seven would be an average team. So they're like yeah. a contender. They they are definitely now a playoff contender. Uh, playoff contender. We saw Tony Tate with 175 receiving yards and a touchdown. They had an interception. They had a force fumble and the fumble recovery, and they beat the Sea Devils, who were the runners up last year. And everybody thought that the Sea Devils would come out swinging and absolutely trounce the Panthers, but that just didn't happen. And what was probably the biggest upset of the season well, of the week because it's just the first yeah. the first week of the season but the biggest <laughs> the might biggest even age to be that that's the thing it might even age to be the best of the season because because if Roklaw does tank and if they aren't good this will be the biggest upset of the season but yes. it will be the biggest surprise of the season if they go on to be playoff contenders so that's my reach number one that Roklaw Panthers are not as bad as people make them out to be and they are playoff I contenders they were be bottom, like two I thought they're gonna be bottom two I've literally got an apology note to Matt Vital Vitale <laughs> Matty Ice saying, brother, I am sorry. <laughs> I thought he was too small. I thought he'd had no experience. And like, you know, he, was he, didn't, he didn't have time to learn. He had a week, one week to learn an entire offensive playbook. And going into that game, I thought, well, the offense is going to be like hitches and slants, nothing, or run game heavy. But it wasn't. It was every, yeah, the whole Arsenal, whole route tree. He did, he did brilliantly. Matt, what's your reach number so, one? My reach number one, speaking on offense, while on, that uh that turn the Raiders offense is completely unstoppable no one in the league is going to stop their offense and when I say that I mean they are going to average well over 30 points a game is that I can, a reach I, can, I reckon maybe sorry. I mean they weren't ranked number one we have the fire okay they they had a really good off they have a really good offense they put up a lot of points today but nobody yeah. even came near to putting up as many points as the Raiders did they 59. had the highest 59 <laughs> highest scoring opening game in the history, the three year history of the ELF. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the highest scoring game full stop. I think the only one that it might be above is when Hamburg absolutely kicked the brakes off of uh, Istanbul last year. That was like mm -hmm. 74, I think, nil. So this one would overtake. I'm not into, I'll have to look into that, but absolutely to raise this up. Because they had McClam who I guess special teams isn't offense, but I'm, you know, when you get him 50 yards up the field, every play is offense. He mm -hmm. was phenomenal. Every single route he ran was phenomenal. He three different types ball. of touchdowns. Three different types of touchdowns. Kick return touchdown. Then he got a receiving uh, No, then he got a, yeah, passing then he got touchdown. a receiving touchdown. And he got a passing touchdown. Like he was, I thought they were going to try and get him like the quad factor, try and get him a rushing one. That's why I thought they were putting him in the backfield. When they had they swung the ball mm -hmm. out to him right side, I was like, he's gonna run it. And then he cocks his hand back, throws Philip Hahn is wide open. Easy touchdown. He is if we're doing like MVP front runner, he is currently number one. Yeah. After week one, he is definitely the MVP MVP front runner. And I don't see anybody catching him after week one. And they didn't have Sandro, which just reinforces my point. He's day to day, he might miss another week. We don't really know. But they didn't have Sandro. And he's still, I know the Ravens defense is fine. I think I was going to say it's top two or three or four probably, but it's pretty good. They got yeah. some decent players. Courtney Etienne's a good player. I mean, Black's a pretty good player. So I think it's unstoppable. I don't see a team that can stop that. Hmm. Interesting. That's my reach. What's your next reach? Reach number two, Kyle Kitchens. Hit, the defensive player of the year is his to lose. It, he has all but bagged it up last year, his first year. With Berlin, he won defensive rookie, he, defensive player of the year. He had 16 sacks, one touchdown. Uh, I think eight forced four forced fumbles or five mm -hmm. forced fumbles, something like that. One fumble recovery, mm -hmm. four pass breakups, and maybe an interception. This year, yesterday, week one, he came out four sacks, fumble recovery, 
and a touchdown, and he might have had the forced fumble. It's all but his to lose. He he has a he has a quarter of the sacks that he did already in one week that he did last year. He has the total number of touchdowns that he did last year, and he has a total number of fumble, fumble recoveries that he had last year. Nobody else is putting up those kinds of numbers. Plus, he's he was con- consistently double teamed the whole game, and he still managed to put up those kind of stats. It's it's his to lose, honestly. I can't say anything else about it, but it's his to lose. He is, by and large, the royal standard for a defensive player that we've seen in the ELF, probably one of the best defensive linemen uh, to play professionally in Europe. Um, there's really nothing else. The The play speaks for itself, and the stats speak for themselves. I agree. I agree. I think he's phenomenal. And I think in my recent article coming out soon with uh, AFI's video sponsor, by the way, uh, <laughs> there are levels of pass rusher, and I think we can all agree that Kitchens is still on a level at the top of the league. And I yes. think that just kind of sums it up. He was phenomenal. He was excellent. Uh, but Parker, he's not the only one that did well. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> this my here is my reach, my next reach. So it's Kitchens, Zachary Blair, and Gustav are the three players that are one of them is going to win. Defensive player of the year. Undoubtedly. Gustav, Gustav has 10 sacks last season. And he's one of the players in the league who has 10 sacks in their ELF career. He's done it in four less games than anyone else. He had a multiple sack game today. He is probably the best defensive lineman on that squad. The rest of them are very good quality as well, which kind of makes it, you know, makes it harder for other teams because they can't double team him like they can double team Kitchens. Kitchens is going to be triple teams this season by tight ends, tackles, and guards. Gustav's a bit more low-key, so I don't think he's going to see that same um, treatment. Problem. Not that OCs aren't going to see him, you know what I mean? But like, I think that he could see the benefits of Kitchen being triple-teamed. And then Zachary Blair led one of the best European like performances as a as a linebacker, just in terms of heart, possibly ever. He was everywhere against Paris, and Paris was seen as this unstoppable team right we all said it and then Blair puts they, they put a goose egg in the first half and they ended up winning it so it's kind of like a bend don't break situation but then they ended up just breaking at the last quarter but Zachary Blair was absolutely not the reason for that and it's between those three one of those three I say it again for the people in the back will win defensive player of the year and that's my I... second one back to Ooh. you okay now this one, I I had to think about this one because this is coming after a former MVP and one of the best okay. quarterbacks that we've seen out of Austria, probably ever. Yep. I I would dare to say ever. I would agree. But Christian Strong is going to be better than Sean Shelton was last year in his MVP season, leading That's an offense lot. like that. Leading an offense like that to 50 plus points in the first week against, you know, what we expected to be a pretty good opponent. I would have to say that Christian Strong throws better, maybe has a little more touch on the ball. And Pretty has our, a bit younger too. he is a bit younger, so he can run a little bit more. He's more durable and he's starting to form already starting to form a really good connection with the team. So if the game against Munich was if the game against Munich was any indication to how he's going to play for the rest of the year, he could put up a better season than Shelton did last year and potentially win the MVP. But my reach is that he's going to be better than Shelton was last year in his MVP season. Okay, I'm gonna read you out Shelton's stats last season <laughs> for that reach, right? Because you know, so it is a reach. Old... It's a reach. It is a reach. So in his MVP last season, this is what you're saying that he's gonna top. So he had 63.5% pass completion, yeah. which is fine. Um, 31 touchdowns to only six interceptions and okay. had a 1.54% interception rate. He was okay. also sacked 18 times and threw for 3,135 yards. So he was extremely efficient. Uh, he was in the top five for like passing yards per game while also not throwing that many interceptions. So you have to, you have to remember the Raiders put up 434 passing yards today. So if, if that carries, if that carries on for the rest of the season, you could be seeing potentially a 4,000 plus yard season. 
But that's but that's only if he plays at the same caliber and level as he did today and puts up the yeah. same stats. But I, if he puts up division, even similar stats. Yeah. yeah. That division's up for the taking. Like he that is not a great division. And does he throw an interception today? Uh let's take a look. I'm not sure if the stats are fully updated since it seen as it was. No, it doesn't show any interceptions caught, but it does show that each team had a fumble recovery. Hmm. Who was that? Who who got the fumble? Oh no, that was a running back. That was a handoff. That was Bonatti who got the fumble in the second uh, drive. So that wasn't even on him either. So honestly, I reached might be pretty good. <laughs> not gonna lie, that might be a pretty solid one. We'll see how it ages. Just, we will. We'll see how this one ages too, right? So Ooh. hungry, cataclysmic <laughs> opening day, <laughs> carrying and droners. I cannot say that uh, first. Part of the name, I apologize to Hungarian Ferivar. viewers, but Ferivar is it Ferivar? Yeah. I get confused with the accents on English, so we don't really have them. So, that's as best as I can do. The Ferivar and yeah, Throners, Ferivar and Throners. So, they are the new Rams. Oh, Istanbul 2.0. They have a worse team than the Rams. The Rams had bright sparks in that bad team. They had Robinson, who was like 800 yards in six games. They had mm-hmm. Zachary Black, who we mentioned before, he was excellent. They had players like uh, Chad, who are now on that Cologne team and performing admirably. They mm-hmm. had the defensive rookie of the year in Isaac, the corner, who's still unsigned, but a former defensive player of the year. And that's all mm-hmm. from a 1-11 team. There aren't anyone in this hungry team I can see doing that. I don't no. see any of them getting a rookie of the year because I know who's going to get rookie of the year. It's going to be Lu- Lucas Harding Canido. Uh and then <laughs> defensive player of the year, you cannot really get defensive player of the year when you get put 36 in your head in opening game week one. Uh, the offensive line was terrible. The players were dropping passes, running backs slow out of the breaks. Just overall, very poor. And we kind of, I think some of us were a little bit apprehensive of the talent the Hungarian team could bring. Yeah. And I don't want to, haze any of the Hungarian players. Like some of them are pretty good. Oh yeah, of but course. They're, just not, they're not on a level of a France like the French homegrown talent, the Austrian homegrown talent, the German homegrown talent, even the Italian homegrown talent at, at some points. I have still uh apprehensions about them not signing the best players. But Hungary just doesn't have the same pedigree as the other teams do. And I think that will develop as the country gets more into football. But right now they're worse than the Rams. Just in every way, offensively, defensively, special teams, worse than the Rams. Worse That's than right. the Rams. Worse than around every way. They, so are you saying that next year they won't be in the league? I don't know because I've heard they've. I they allegedly don't sue me. Allegedly, I do not know this, but this is just my opinion that they have a fairly rich investment, as like they're fine financially. Um, mm. allegedly. So I don't think they'll duck out of the league. That's ultimately what did the Rams in, I believe, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Um, so I think they will still be in the league next year, but they will be bottom of the league this year. And that if they are in the league next year and they don't sign great players, they will be bottom of the league next year too. So the proverbial Cleveland Browns of the ELF. <laughs> I would say, I would say yes, but more like. The Lions, because Browns have had some players that have been good, and so the Lions actually, to be fair. But I would say, who's the best player? They got Evans, who came in as QB, and then the ball just fell out of his hand, and they had a fumble six. And then that was horrible. Kind of that that was that was awful. I, I mm-hmm. in all my years of watching football, I have seen that happen maybe three times, and today was the fourth time. So it's something that you don't see often. If you're a quarterback and you're cocking back to throw. And you just let the ball slip out. There's something wrong, unless um, oh, unless it's like a horribly rainy game. That should never happen. No, I agree. And it, he's a former Green Bay Packer, by the way. Like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers um, is not happy. He does not claim him. <laughs> like, you got. A, I know it's a, a mistake, but when that mistake leads to a touchdown, which it did, fumble six by Lug- Ludwig Myron brother <laughs> like this team is seriously going to struggle and I, I i don't see any like like zachary blair had 11 blocked kicks i think last year and on a 1 and 11 team and they beat the dragons in that 1 and 11 team which was like cinderella story if i've ever seen one mm-hmm. but 
I just don't see them beating anyone. And this is my reach. I just don't think they're going to beat anyone. <laughs> Surge had some decent players last season. And I don't see Hungary beating anyone. I'm, I don't know. It's, that's my reach. Just they are bad. They they're not they're not looking good at all. Hmm. Some pretty solid reaches that we have here. We'll see how how well they age, and Indeed. see after next week how how many uh hold up, how many don't hold up, and what the new reaches are. Indeed. And with that, I shall bid you all. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. Thank you to my uh, excellent co-host in Parker Rogers. I have been Matt Bressington. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Boom.